Hi everybody, welcome to today's Bite Size PD. I'm going to be showing you some of the newer features that are in Nearpod with today's episode of What's New with Nearpod. So today we're focusing on the evidence-based learning instructional priority for maximizing opportunities to respond. When using Nearpod, it is one of the best tools that I can think of that allows you to maximize those opportunities to respond because it has so many different activities that you can do with your students at any given time. So our learning intentions and success criteria are today. Learning intention, I am learning what's new in Nearpod so I can continue to increase engagement using Nearpod lessons. My success criteria is, I will know I'm successful when I can take the ideas presented today and apply them to my future Nearpod lessons. So what are we doing today? Well, I'm gonna remind you about logging in. We're gonna look at the co-teacher link. We're also going to look at how you can move from live and student paced, or live lessons to student paced back to live. Um, we're gonna be focusing on the annotation tool, which is newer, not new, but newer, new location, etc. We're also going to be looking at um, what's been happening with interactive videos and the drag and drop features and how those have been improved as well. So I just wanna remind you when you're logging in, you're gonna log in using nearpod.com. Make sure that you are going to sign in with Office 365 and you will be using your district email address and password. So not your CSD docs, but the canyonsdistrict.org with your password. Now you have different options. One option is to build within Nearpod. Um, I know that that was clunky in the past, but they have done a lot to improve on it. Another option that you can do is to use Google Slides and then use the Nearpod extension. So if you don't have it yet, you can always go and click on the add-ons. Otherwise, you can go to the extensions, click on Nearpod, and then you can open it, and it will show up on the right-hand side of your screen. This is really easy if you already have slideshows that you have built inside of Google Slides, and all you want to do is add in those Nearpod activities. All right, so the first um, feature that we're going to talk about is the co-teaching feature. So I'm going to get out of the slideshow now. Um, one thing I want to show you when you are looking at the co-teaching feature, okay, is that it has a lot of different things. Actually, let me go back into this slideshow and kind of show you what the capabilities are. So co-teaching means that you, um, as the teacher, are allowing someone else to help facilitate your lesson with you. So you have you as a co-teacher and or you as the teacher, and then you have a second person facilitating that is your co-teacher. Um, both of you are able to control the lesson, being able to navigate, um, et cetera, okay? But notice that there's some things that the co-teacher can't do. For example, they can't end the lesson. They can't create those on-the-fly activities. They're not able to do the whiteboard and annotation features, which I'll be showing in just a little bit, okay? But most of the things, being able to um, share students' results in real time, seeing those um, students' responses, you're able to do all of that. Um, so it just makes it easier. This could be good, for example, if you have like a student teacher that you want to be working with where you are um, maybe heading the lessons and you want them to help and move the slides along, that could be great. Um, if you are a co-teaching teacher, this is a great way to get both of you involved in the lesson that you're teaching. So let me just show you how to do that now. So when you go into Nearpod, okay, and you are starting a lesson, let me just get back out of this lesson really quick so you can see. So you can go find the lesson that you want to teach. I'm going to go into this um, lesson right here, which is my um, a STEM brace and booster one that I did recently. What I can do is I can click on that live participation. From that live participation, I can say that I want to launch a live participation. And then from there, it's going to ask me if I want a co-teacher link. If I say, yes, I do want co-teacher, then I can literally just copy and paste this to my co-teacher. They can open it up and they will have access to be able to manipulate and move those slides just as easy as the teacher does. 
So that's a pretty um, good tool if you want to be able to have two people working on your slides at the same time without having to be logged into that teacher account on both. Okay, um, the next one that I'm going to show you is the live versus the student paste. So this is really good, for example, if maybe you started a live lesson and you had a, someone come in that needed to talk to you during your lesson. Um, and you want to keep the kids engaged, you want them to move on to the next activity, but you can't control that for a second because you're talking to someone in your room. Or maybe it is um, that you just want them, to, those students to be able to go on and, and do those lesson or those next few slides on their own. And then you go back and review it with them a few minutes later. So um, the way that you can do that is inside of your lesson, on the bottom right hand side of your screen, you can move your lesson forward and back just like normal, okay? And then you can come down here and notice down here on the bottom right, it says turn on student paste. When I click on student paste, it's going to start them on the slide I am currently on. But then I can say, I want them to be able to look at slides four through eight. I can come here, I can say four through eight. I can say turn on. When I turn that on, notice it's saying that my student paste is on and me moving through that lesson is no longer going to affect what the students see. I could say, got it, great, that's great. They can move through the lesson, they can do any of those activities they want to, read anything that they need to, and then as soon as I'm ready to turn it off, I can come back down here to the bottom right, I can say, turn off, and now it's telling me that my student pace is turned off, teacher is now in control again. So I can say, okay, got it, and I can now move my students on to continue on the lesson just like I was before. So that is the um, live to student paste, and then you can go back from student paste back to your live. So that is this one right here. Um, the next one I want to show you is going to be annotating slides. So annotating slides on a Nearpod um, is relatively new. It's not super new, but I just wanted to remind people about it because I feel like it's a very valuable tool. So when you are on a slide that will allow you to annotate over it, usually that's a slide that um, isn't an actual activity. So for example, let me get to one. Um, wow, I have a lot of activities in this. Okay, so here is a slide that um, is not an activity for students. I can come down here. Notice I have three features available down here. One is that I'm going to add an activity. This could be done on any slide that you're in. It allows you to add a slide if you need to add one really quickly. Maybe you want to send them out to the web. You could send them out to a web content, a web link. Okay, I can throw in an open-ended question. I could have a draw it real quick, or I could do a true false. Okay, the next one is a great feature. For example, maybe you're doing a, a math lesson or something like that where a student asks you a question that's not necessarily in your slide. You could easily open your whiteboard. You could draw out what you need to. Um, 31 plus 5. And then you could help that student solve it. Okay, when you're done with that, you can easily close that whiteboard again. It brings you back to the slide that you were on. Okay, the other feature that I really like, though, is this one called Annotate. When I click on the Annotate, literally the slide that I am currently on lets you now annotate over it. So maybe I needed to underline something, or maybe I needed to... Um, circle or whatever it is okay i'm able to add text so if i needed to add any text i could say that i need to add text here and i could add whatever i need to i can move it around just as if i am editing that slide in real time okay this is really good especially when it comes to wiser when we're talking about speaking reading lit, um writing listening okay this is a great way to do that because you're able to write on and manipulate and talk to your students in real time. They're able to see what's happening on your screen. You can see that this office is yeah. So I can do anything that I need to in real time. Um, 
So I love that annotate feature. It's a great tool, like I said, for our wiser. Um, it's great for us if we need to just write on something. Maybe there was something that wasn't there or maybe there's something that you need to highlight a little bit farther. You're able to do that right here. Um, highlighting is another feature that I didn't quite mention, but you can highlight with that tool as well. So that is the highlight feature. Um, I'm gonna close that annotation now. And I'm going to move on to the next one. Annotating slides um, is the one that we just did. Um, the next one I wanted to show you guys is interactive videos. So interactive videos is what you'll wanna do before you're in your slideshow presentation. Um, so I'm just gonna get out of this presentation really quickly. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna edit this little presentation that I've been kind of playing around with today. When I edit my presentation, and like I said, you can do this inside of Nearpod, you can also do it inside of Google Slides, but I just really love this, so I wanted to make sure that you guys know about it and know the new features that are available. So when I come here um, to add my activity, right here is video. It can also be under um, interactive, and there's video there as well. But before, um, in the past, you could add videos. You couldn't really do much with them. Now you're able to add those multiple choice type questions into them. Um, I really like this feature because there's tons of videos that are already available for you. And you can also look at your state standards, which is very helpful. So now I can say I'm looking at for Utah. I'm looking for mathematics. And then it will come up with videos that I would like. So maybe I wanted this one on area, I could click on it. And now notice anywhere that it has a dot, there is already a question there. I can go in and I can edit that question if I wanted to. So um, that's really helpful. Let me cancel out of that. Um, or if there are um, more that I want to add, more activities, I can click here and I can say that I want to add an open-ended question or a multiple choice, and it will let me add that in as well. I can say um, question. I'm going to save that. And notice it put it right where um, I was clicked on, but you can always move it to where you want it to be. So now it's at 18 questions. There's an open-ended question that says question. That's kind of what I wrote in there. You would obviously want to make it what you want it to be. All right. So that is um, that. But I did want to show you really quickly, if I can, when I go back. Oops, I went out of it all the way. Let me go back into it. Okay, so when I add those activities, I just wanted you to notice how big that library is now. Okay, um, that it's got tons of different subjects, it's got all grade levels, and literally there's just tons and tons of resources that are already there for you. If you don't like what you see, you can always upload a YouTube video that you've maybe used in the past, or maybe you've uploaded it into YouTube, and you can add your questions in there to make them interactive. If there's videos that you've used in the past, they're going to show up here or you can always upload your own video. So maybe you've made a screencast or different things like that. You could throw those videos in as well. Anyway, great tool. Um, if you haven't tried it, I would highly suggest um, giving that one a shot. Okay, uh, moving on from interactive videos, the next one I want to show you is your drag and drop feature. Going into your drag and drop, um, Basically, it's a library that allows students to have a background that you've already created and they are dragging the, and dropping the answers on top of that background. Um, not a new feature, but it now has some new abilities. So what I'd like to do is show you those now. If I go back into my activities, I can go into my quizzes and games and I can click on my drag and drop. When I click on my drag and drop, I can say that I want to add into there. I'm going to move my camera over to this side really quickly um, because then you'll be able to see everything that's there. Okay. Um, 
Over on your right hand side is your drag and drop library. There are tons and tons of activities that are already there for you. Um, find the volume I thought was kind of cute. Um, this is probably for fifth, sixth grade. Um, so it gives the instructions, the game, the activity is already built for you where it has, it looks like a video game. The kids have to figure out the area or not the area, but the volume of these. And then they're literally going to drag and drop their character on top of it. And then they're going to be able to share it with you so you can see if they got the right answers or not. So pretty cool activity. Um, other ones that I wanted to show you, okay, is in that same drag and drop. Let me go back into my ad activity. So besides all of the ones that they already have available for you, where they've already added those backgrounds in, if you're not seeing what you want, um, one new option, okay, is, or not a new option, but one option is to create your own. The one thing that I really like is that you can add your own GIF in as a background image, or they have built-in backgrounds now that you can use. So for example, if I want to add a background, um, I can just have a blank one if I want to, but a lot of times maybe you're having students just like um, take their spelling words or and sort them. You can do a T-shape or um, you can do equals. So maybe you're having them um, look at math problems and everything that equals 10 is on one side and everything that equals negative 10 is on another side or something like that. You can put those in there by adding labels or I mean by um, editing in here, and then you can add those labels over here that they're having to drag and drop. Okay. And they have a lot of, um, different backgrounds that are already built in now that could be useful for you to use. Like I said, you can always add images as your background image if you want to. Okay. And once you've added that in, then you're able to come here and add your text. So, uh, maybe, um, one plus nine oops one plus nine is going to equal 10. i can say what how big i want it to be um so that's going to be there okay then i can say that this side is going to equal 10. okay so now when those students open this up they're going to be able oops let's see Okay, that's going to be negative 10 and then you'll be able to add your drag and drop items over here that they're going to be able to add in their own <coughs> so anyway that is the drag and drop feature like i said i love that they've added those backgrounds in there again you can add your own images to make it what you want it to be but i love 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 that they now have the ability to just bring in um, your their own activities. I'm gonna just replace it so you can kind of see what they look like. So now we've got activities that are pre-built in here that the students can use and practice with. So that is your drag and drop feature. Um, and that's all I have for you today. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out and I would be happy to discuss Nearpod with you more. Other than that, um, don't forget that you um, can, let me go back to the slideshow, that you can um, access any of our stuff through Canyon U. You can visit the Bite Size PD page and you can um, request, request your relicensure credit here. Okay, have a great day.